As part of its citizen engagement role, strategy to outline its economic policy objectives, the Lagos State Government presented its year 2021 budget, christened Rekindled Hope to Business Media Stakeholders in the Country. In his opening remarks, the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Mr. Sam Egube, gave an overview of the 2020 budget performance and key highlights for fiscal year 2021. It's important that we see how we did in the past um, so that we know whether the future holds um, the promise which we give. Um, in terms of highlights, um, we didn't know when we entered 2020 that COVID was locking around the corner. But once it did, as reasonable leaders, we felt it was important for us to review our strategy. Um, we put the team's agenda under review and it stood out strong. It was still relevant. Um, and all we needed to do was to um, review the budget somewhat downwards and then to bring forward certain aspects of the budget and of the team's agenda um, that were important. Because for us, um, what it was was that we needed to maintain a very strong pandemic response. We needed to rethink um, the way we are going to live together, drive the economy and drive um, the outcomes of our government uh, going into the balanced part of 2020. Uh, we then reviewed the budget downwards. We reviewed um, it by 21% from 1.16 trillion to 920 billion, having taken deep considerations um, for the headwinds that we were experiencing. Uh, the result of that was a recurrent expenditure drop by about 10% um, to 413, and a revenue revision um, down to 812 billion. Um, that was a 24% uh, reduction of about 240, 250 billion, um, leaving us um, with a ratio between capital and recurrent expenditure of 55, um, 45. Um, I'm happy to announce to you that despite um, the huge challenges, the economic and social headwinds which COVID-19 brought um, together with the um, hijack of the NSAS protestations, um, we still um, drove the economy of Lagos very strongly. We kept our hands on the steering wheel and remained focused and we were able to achieve a budget, overall budget performance of about 86%, um, with a total revenue performance of about 93%. Uh, um, this, in our view, um, is quite remarkable, um, especially given the nature of the challenges we faced as a people and we faced as a state. And so there were great performances al along several, all the sectors, basically, um, especially in finance, health, education, transportation, <coughs> agriculture, infrastructure, and the environment um, generally. The budget size is broken down into recurrent and capital, as I said, and the ratios are 60 to 40. And the recurrent side of the budget is further analyzed to a total personnel cost of 168 and total overhead cost of 260, um, and then the debt charge of 31.7 uh, billion. We've moderated and ensured that our personnel cost remains within the 40% um, internationally accepted benchmark um, <clears throat> of our total expenditure, right? And, and it represents about 14%, 14.5% of total expenditure. We are well within that threshold. And I, and I said on the capital side, 60% is a very um, what I would call a holy position to be, um, and uh, history shows we can do it, and we believe with the performance management mechanisms which we have, we are going to do it again in 2021. Um, so I'll go details to show you how this budget is um, allocated, on what we call the classification of the functions of government. Um, and so in general public service, um, you have 137.8 billion 
representing about 11.8%. Um, a big chunk of that, um, some um, highlight which I needed us to see is what the budget is uh, for technology, which is 24.5. But you will see how we have aggressively pushed up technology, given some of the objectives which I had um, explained earlier. Public order and safety is 44.1 billion. Economic affairs is 351 billion, moving to 29% from 26%. It's important that if we must lift the economy of our people up, we must do that around economic affairs, which involves our spend on our Greek, commerce, tourism, energy, transportation, um, the works family generally, waterfront, um, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, our spend on environment is 59%, uh, 59.6 billion. Um, housing and community amenities, 37 billion. Health, 106 billion. Um, recreation, culture, and religion, 7 billion. Um, education, 146 billion. Uh, social protection, 9 um, billion. In conclusion, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, our friends from the press, um, I'd like to assure all of us um, that this administration, under the leadership of Mr. Governor Babaji de Olushola Sonwolu, will leave no stone unturned um, in ensuring the full implementation of this budget. I have assured you earlier um, that we have a bespoke a monitoring mechanism that just ensures we have our eyes on the ball at all times um, to drive the MDAs to do what is required to ensure a very strong um, budget performance. I'd like to also at this point mention uh, that it's important as Lagos and as Lagosians um, that we also um, commit um, to upholding our civic responsibilities in paying the right taxes and encouraging our people to do so. The event featured a Q&A session with seasoned financial journalists pointing out issues and seeking more clarification on the items of the Lagos budget 2021. The good work the Lagos State is doing, uh, Penn Cinema Bridge, Agigemoto Road, Osho Diableba, um, BRT Express and the rest. Um, I observed that some of the critical road uh, that will help this axis have been rehabilitated. But I also observed that uh, Sule Street stroke Shebutimo axis, which lies almost parallel to the BRT corridor, has not been attended to. Similar to that is Itire Road. When will this good work of road rehabilitation be extended to Itire Road? Thank you. The, the rail projects, uh, both the red and the blue line, uh, could you give us the more clarity or disclosure in terms of the parties to this uh, single digit interest rate? Or are they local, are they foreign multilateral, bilateral relations, uh, institutions as it were? Uh, what are the terms and, and if their names are, can also be disclosed, that would be good to also put the whole project being the first of its type across the country and in Africa in more context. Thank you very much. I would um, leave my colleague, the Honorable Commissioner for Finance, to speak to debt servicing. Um, I would like to speak to what you call the downside risks. Um, and, and my understanding is, if we are unable to achieve this, um, what the implications are. So uh, the, the, the way to put it is that when I hear all the questions and all that we say we want to do and we want to achieve. Um, even though I raise a lot of comments as to what we have done, uh, it is clear, and I'm sure you know, that there's a lot that still need to be done. And those things that need to be done comes out of the size of the budget. So there is a rate at which Lagos must grow, right, to address some of these things. And so it's not only to grow on the revenue side, but also to grow in the ingenuity with which you work with the private sector to deliver um, some of these um, objectives. 
I think let me start by saying that for a state like Lagos, with a lot of infrastructural, I'll use the word deficit because there's a lot that we need to do in terms of our continuous improvement drive, uh, debt is good, especially when we're using them for capital uh, projects. Uh, I think what is more important is a debt sustainability uh, benchmark. Uh, to answer the question straight, uh, we have two benchmarks that we follow. Uh, there is the Federal Debt Management Office benchmark of 30% revenue to uh, debt. Uh, and of course, there's the World Bank benchmark, which is 40%. Uh, so on that basis, we close the year 2020 at 19.8%. Very, very far low from any of the benchmarks that we're talking about. And I think the question also moves, you know, to ask about what will be um, the implication of the additional debt given the 2021 uh, budget. We see ourselves landing at about 22 percent, uh, given all the numbers, the revenue, and the additional debt. You know, we will put um, uh, on our activities for 2021. We see ourselves landing at 22 uh, percent. Uh, our debt charges, um, as shown in the budget, is about 31 billion, uh, and our total debt, uh, you know, repayment, including CDSA principal and interest, is about 158 billion. Um, Bloomberg asked a question on, you know, providing clarity more about deficit financing. Of course, we know that uh, most part of the budget is predicated and really, uh, you, you know, its foundation lies on revenue. Uh, and like I've said, uh, we cannot depend on our own internally generated revenue or the federal transfers that we get from the federal government. We want the kind of development that Lagos needs at this time, meaning that we have to go uh, uh, you know, and borrow. Uh, the breakdown of the 192 billion deficit financing as shown in the budget, uh, we will go out for some domestic fund uh, you know, raising in the local um, capital market through bond, about 100 billion. Uh, we will do external loan of about 52 billion, and um, we will also do internal loan of about 41 billion. And everything adds up to about 192 billion as shown in the budget. So that's the breakdown. Uh, and I think what makes us highly optimistic and very excited is that all this, it's a principle in the, all this will be used 100% for capital project. Thank you. Our first strategy to keep the economy open is the use of non-pharmaceutical interventions. Secondly, contact tracing and containment to slow down the transmission of the virus in the economy. If the virus is going to be with us for the next months or years, then it is something that we just have to get used to living with and adjust our lifestyle to um, accommodate this new phenomenon that we know as COVID and run our economy side by side with the cooperation of the populace. The government can only do so much. It is up to the public to follow the clear guidelines that as government, both state and federal, we have carefully rolled out for the understanding of the people of Lagos to partner with us to ensure that we can keep COVID in a place that allows us to keep managing uh, the public health response and the economy. The Commissioners for Transportation, Finance, Education, and Special Advisor to the Governor on Works and Infrastructure speak further on the trust of activities in their ministries in 2021 and beyond. Our first tell us, tell us experience of leveraging technology for education during that period and as we've recovered now, how you're strengthening it? Okay, you know, the, the, nobody planned for this, but um, the, what happened was when we saw that the lockdown was going to happen and we were engaging with various partners, uh, many private schools were comfortable. We said, oh, we'll go online. We start teaching online, but we knew that we had not, we didn't have sufficient investment to push our teaching and learning online. So what do we do? So we had to have a sort of, you know, a plan that would be in stages, in phases. 
And so the first thing we did was, look, move teaching and learning onto the simplest form of technology, the most ubiquitous, the most available, and that's radio. And that's when we moved people onto radio. So people on, uh, you know, we started uh, teaching on radio, doing classes on radio and television. And it was from there that we also knew that, you know, radio has its inherent weaknesses. You can't tell whether they are learning. You can't, you can't assess what is going on in the classroom. So we knew we had to move it onto a digital platform. And that's when we partnered with some banks and some organizations, a particular bank actually, don't mind me saying it, but First Bank, where they actually gave us substantial funds to buy uh, devices for our students in the most underserved areas. And we loaded these devices with our curriculum, teachers, um, guides, squeezes, tests, and so on. And there was a small chat room and we also got um, data from MTN because that was the major problem of our students, the device and the data. And so using both, we were able to give students in remote areas and they were able to assess their curriculum and keep on learning during that period. Now that I consider a pilot and we are very, very and exceptionally grateful, honestly, to the companies that came to our aid during that period. And now we need to grow that because we were able to give at least 80% of our terminal class students, but we are, now, we, now, we are now in another phase and it's clear that we'll still need to keep on investing and we could see that this is the future, this is what we have to do for all our students. So there's a further impetus in us now in this financial year to continue. We are going to deepen it, we are going to give more students, we are going to continue to ask the uh, corporate world to support us, but we are also going to invest ourselves in devices, in data, and work with data companies to provide data for our students so that they keep on learning. There are many ideas that we have. In the area of attracting private capital, which is very important because the government cannot fund a whole infrastructure project like we heard about the footmen and other projects. How, how would you describe the transparency and creating the enabler to attract more of these critical investments to support what you're doing? If we can't do it better, I said it at the, at the presentation and I said it that you cannot demonstrate it better by the way we have done it. Because we looked at it, what is it that has bedeviled this particular project from taking off right off from 1996, when it ought to, the first one ought to have taken off. I was, a, I was part of the, of the team on the, port, on the Third Milan Bridge. And as a, even as a young engineer over 30 years ago, I looked forward to the Fourth Milan Bridge happening. One, one key thing that everybody keeps saying is the transparency that was not there, so the process could not take off. You will not find an international investor wanting to put his or her money in, a, in an environment where the laws are not, the, the, the enabling laws are not there. So if the, if, the, if the arbitration laws are not right in place, if transparency from the owner has been jettisoned, he or she would look back and say, what do I want to get myself into? So what we then did was to say, all right, advertise it in the best journals in the world. Let the best of the best come up to say, we want to build. Let also our team of assessors, internally and externally. And that's why I said as a government, we got the best kind of transaction advisors to, to assist us in this selection process. So like the Alani Ajayis are there for the legal, for the finance, for the finance side, you have the likes of the of the KPMG being there with us. And then on the on the technical side, you also have AEC Rendell being with us. Aside, so you have that three, the three of those three, together with the internal mechanisms of the Ministry of Work, ready to be able to midwife this project. And from day one, every time of the, every step of the way that we go, we ensure that we give back to the we, Give back to public and tell them this is where we are in this process. It's a six-step process. This is where we are at every stage of the evaluation process. We come back to give the public the, 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 uh, the feedback where exactly we are. So that's exactly what we have demonstrated, that transparency. Even in the ESI, the engagement process of the citizenry. Whoever is doing your ESI international, if you have as an international investor, you want to be sure that the ESI for this project, that's the first document they will ask for you. So the best of the best internationally is who will be working on the ESI. So it cannot be better. That transparency has been demonstrated from day one, and we intend to keep to it to the end until when we get the the the, the get, get to a financial close on the project. I think that's what we're doing. When you look at the budget that has just been passed, um, the impact of the budget on transport is threefold. So first of all, we need to optimize uh, the existing network, and so you will see that we've identified 60 gridlock points. And uh, we've intervened, I mean, we've, we've made interventions in 31 of them, and then we'll be going, uh, we'll be making interventions on the other 29. 
So when you look at Allen Avenue, you look at uh, Lekki Force Roundabout, Second Roundabout, um, Ibrava, Desoya, Ikotu, and Maryland, we have made major interventions there. So we have taken out the roundabout and then we've signalized the junction to increase the capacity. So we're doing that uh, on the other, I mean, the other junctions to increase the capacity so that we can optimize the network. The second intervention is the reform of the public transport system. Now, you just said something. In Lagos, we have 22 million people. More people are coming to Lagos. We can't all buy cars and ply the road. And um, so the only way to move people in a sustainable manner is to continue to develop our public transport. That's why we're focusing on the rail. And that's why we are, I mean, this administra uh, administration is hell-bent on finishing the red line and the blue line. Very important. We're also building more BLTs as well as modernizing the bus sector. So that's where the last mile comes in. You can see the blue buses to replace the downfall so that people can have something decent to move from one point to the other. And then the last one is enforcement. So we're deploying a lot of, I mean, technology to ensure that we reduce the interface between our law enforcement officers and the people on the road. So we have the AMPL, that's the automatic uh, number plate recognition that has been deployed. We are deploying handheld cameras uh, and handheld sets to make sure that we catch offenders by capturing their plate numbers. And then we run it against our database. And then depending on the offense that you commit, we will send a bill to your, to your address. So that way, we are, I mean, we'll begin to develop a smart city. If you look at the scale of our economy, if you look at the size of our IGR, what is most important is debt sustainability. We have the highest IGR in the country amongst all the states that has been increasing at an increasing rate in the past years. And I think that's what really matters. We are very, very good on our debt sustainability benchmark. We do very lower than the national and international benchmark. And so that gives us the comfort. And if you look at the infrastructural needs that Lagos will require to become that 21st century economy, we need to bring that growth that we ordinarily achieve in 20 years to bring it home now. So, and that's why we continue to uh, augment our budget with deficit financing. So the figures are there, about 192 billion in deficit financing uh, to support the 2021 budget out of it a hundred billion in bond we are sourcing this from the local domestic capital market uh, and we are doing um, external and internal loan uh, so having said that we have a strategic plan what we call a medium-term revenue strategy because everything is predicated on revenue at the end of the day all the things we want to do in health all the things we want to do in education all the things we want to do in housing, it is predicated on us being able to meet our number. And that is exactly what we are focusing on now. We are putting all the resources, we are you know, dotting all the T's and crossing all the I's, ensuring that we block leakages, ensuring that we use more data, automation, technology to drive uh, our revenue administration. Uh, we are bringing in a new order for enforcement, ensuring that people will need to pay their taxes pay their taxes in Lagos. Lagos State, it's uh, a 30 trillion Naira economy by GDP. So if that is true, what we are supposed to be doing in taxable revenue should be about 1.5 trillion. Uh, so and that's, we are on that journey plan because we know that the possibility is there. We know that the uh, potential is there. And that's exactly what gives us the drive and the comfort to actually do what we do. With the profile of Nigeria's economical capital going through the challenges of being the epicenter of the novel coronavirus and recent NSAS protests, Lagos State, through its budget 2021 estimate of 1.164 trillion naira, has a great opportunity of ensuring effective implementation that will unlock more economic opportunities, rebuild, industrialize, achieve new level socioeconomic transformation.